After having an improvised dust collection system for our workshop, we finally decided to upgrade to a proper dust collector for our CNC work. And that posed the challenge. The original dust shoe that came with our CNC router was too small to fit with the new dust collector hose. Therefore, in this video, we will make a DIY dust shoe using plywood offcuts from our workshop and other easily accessible items and saving some money while doing so. We will be sharing the free DXF files for the project on our website if we succeed with the build. The first challenge is to come up with the dust shoe design and figure out the proper placement for the collection tube. The original Onefinity dust shoe had a collection tube located in front of the spindle, which is quite handy solution. However, having a 100 mm diameter tube in front looks bulky. Therefore, we had the idea of attaching it behind the x-axis. This way the dust hole won't be in the way allowing us to easily access the router, change the bits and calibrate the z-axis. It didn't take that much time to design the dust shoe, however finding an easily accessible solution for the brushes required some research. And in the end we decided to use brush seals used for doors and windows. But more on that later. Now we have to make the parts for the dust shoe. So after loading a 9mm thick plywood offcut on the CNC router, we can start making the components. While the CNC is cutting the parts, I'm keeping the new dust collection on to see how it performs. Since it's sucking 600 cubic meters per hour, it picked up most of the wood dust, even when held in hand next to the spindle. This makes us confident that the new dust collector will be efficient enough for most of our CNC projects and will keep the workshop more or less dust free. The cut settings we are using for the parts allow us to skip using the support tabs for almost all parts except the small mounting components, allowing us to simply pop the components out of the sheet after the cuts are completed. However, removing the small mounting parts requires breaking off the stock material and chiseling the support tabs. When the support tabs are removed, we can move on to the router table to trim the component edges and make the parts nicer to work with while assembling and using the final product. This time, we are using a 3mm roundover bit which leaves us with nicely rounded edges. The only thing we have to pay attention to when working on the router table is not to trim the edges inside the dust shoe. Since the brush seals we are going to attach to the dust shoe use a glue strip, we want to have the maximum gluing surface. After the component edges are rounded nicely, we can move to the workbench and start assembling the project. As the first step, we are adding M4 lock nuts to the pockets we cut on the CNC router. Since we didn't leave any tolerance or tool path offset, the lock nuts fit quite snugly, ensuring the nuts won't fall out during the assembly. After all the lock nuts are in place, it's time to spread out the parts of the large section of the dust shoe on the workbench and add a little bit of wood glue to the surfaces. Now we can stack the parts on top of each other and add M4 screws through the holes. The screws are great not only for properly aligning the components, but also serve well when squeezing the parts together and pushing out the excess glue from the seam, eliminating the need for clamps. When the main body of the dust shoe is glued, we can add these small disc components to the assembly. To these we will attach the dust collection hole. And again, to secure the parts together, we are adding the M4 screw through the small holes. This time the screws solve not only the positioning and clamping tasks, but also will ensure that tube mount parts won't delaminate when securing the dust hole. Next, we have to glue together the parts for the detachable section of the dust shoe. So again, we spread out the parts on the workbench, add a little bit of glue, spread it out nicely and stack the parts on top of each other. To secure them together, I'm adding the same M4 screws as we did earlier. While we have the glue on the workbench, we can also secure the dust tube mounting arm components together. But before we do that, I'm adding M6 lock nuts into the joinery pockets to one of the holder's components. 
this time to ensure all the parts are aligning properly they are using wooden doubles which need to be hammered into position. While we are waiting for the glue to set we can start working on the mounting components. We need to drill a hole through the parts that will help us secure the dust shoe to the CNC router. So the first step is to carefully mark the center of the tenon that joins the parts to the CNC's mounting bracket to both of the holder's components. Then we can take a 4mm drill and carefully drill the hole going straight through the part. Since I don't have a drill press in the workshop, I'm doing this by hand. And with that in consideration, the end result was surprisingly good. One of the last tasks before we can attach the dust shoe to the CNC machine is adding magnets to the mounting arms and the removable part of the dust shoe. To do so, I'm carefully marking the magnet position on the attachment tenons. They have to be sure the placement matches the pocket location on the mounting arms. After the markings are made, I can drill shallow holes that match the disc magnets we will be using for the project. And when the holes are drilled, we can carefully insert the disc magnets into holder arm pockets. To make sure the magnet poles match on the dust shoe and the mounting components, I'm marking the surface of each magnet and then carefully place each of the magnet disc in its position. After all the magnets are installed, we can attach the mounting arms to the large dust shoe and secure them in place with a couple of screws. It's super satisfying to watch how well the attachment slides into place. However, we still have a couple of things to do before we can start enjoying the fruits of our labor. We have to attach the brush seals inside the dust shoe. The one we got consists of a plastic profile and a brush component, which means we have to cut the profiles into proper length and then we can cut the brushes at the matching length. So without much hesitation, I'm marking the length of the profile by placing them inside the dust shoe, making the markings with a knife and then doing the necessary cuts on the miter saw. To ensure the brushes will meet in the corners, we have to cut a little bit of the profile at the ends of the dust shoe. So I make a couple of markings and do precise cuts on the miter saw to remove the excess material from the corner joint. To clean up any imperfections left by the saw blade, I'm clamping the plastic profiles to the workbench and doing some cleanup cuts with a chisel. This ensures the best corner joinery for the plastic profiles. Now we can carefully glue the side profiles to the dust shoe components. All we have to do is remove the glue strip seal and gently push the profiles into their correct positions. After all the side profiles are in place, we can make the measurements for the end profiles and cut them to length on the miter saw. Before we can proceed to gluing them into the position, we have to test how well they fit and remove a little bit of material at each end of the profile. So I make precise markings with a knife and do some cleanup cuts on the miter saw. But before we secure the profiles in their position, we have to cut the brush strip into matching lengths. This is fairly simple, the pliers are enough for making the cuts. Now we can slide the brushes into plastic profiles and glue them to the dust shoe parts. I'm starting with the shoe attachment and then I can glue the profile to the larger dust shoe section. At this point we only need to cut the brushes for the sides of the dust shoe, which was super simple. Just marking the length of the brush, clipping the pieces with the pliers and sliding the brushes into the plastic profiles. When all the brushes are made, we can assemble the dust shoe and see how well the brushes seal the dust collection area. To be honest, it doesn't look perfect. But the small gaps we have shouldn't affect the dust collection that much. But the only way to find out is by attaching the assembly to our CNC router and doing some test cuts. So we have to attach the mount components to the spindle base plate which requires us to insert the tenons inside the base plate grooves, attach the joinery insert at the other side 
and secure everything together with M4 screw and a lock nut at the back of the base plate. This is basically the same mounting mechanism as the original Onefinity dust shoe, just the DIY version. I might be adding a small hex nut holder to the insert part at some point in the future to eliminate the need for a wrench or pliers whenever I need to adjust the height of the dust shoe. Before adding the dust hose to the dust shoe, we have to quickly finish assembling the hose holder plate. So we can take the assembly we made earlier and attach it to the base panel. To secure the parts together, we are adding M6 screw to the hinge joint and then we can add another screw to the star knob. We have to have a way to easily adjust the tube mount, therefore having a star knob is essential. Anyway, now we can remove the plastic cover component from the CNC frame and replace it with the one we just made. The DIY version has the same size screws as the original plate, so when attaching it to the frame component, we can simultaneously secure the cables. Now it's just a matter of adding the dust hole to the dust shoe and securing it into place with the mounting arm before we can test how well the dust shoe performs. For the test we need to attach a plywood sheet on the CNC work surface, position the dust shoe at a proper height and calibrate the router bit. Adjusting the dust shoe is straightforward, just sliding it down so the brushes meet the top of the material and securing the mounting screw. To calibrate the router bit we can simply remove the front of the dust shoe and do the necessary tasks. When the detachable shoe is removed there is plenty of room to change the router bit if needed, which is nice in case you are doing multi-tool operations. The last thing before starting the test cut is adding an extra sheet at the back of the stock material to ensure there are no gaps between the dust shoe brushes and the CNC's work surface. And finally we are ready to see the project in action. As we can see our new dust collection system and the dust shoe have picked up most of the wood chips on the work surface, also from the cutting grooves. Even the small offcuts from the joinery mortises have been picked up by the dust collector, so the results speak for themselves and we have created equal and quality dust shoe to the original one for less than $10 instead of purchasing one for $90. In the next video we will make a cabinet for the dust collector and install everything needed for a proper workshop dust collection system. Until then, you can grab free DXF files for the dust shoe project on aribabox.com and make one for your CNC setup. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.